January 12th, St. Alred Abbot, One Thing Thou Lackest. In these words, God called Alred from the court of a royal saint, David of Scotland, to the silence of the cloister. He left the king, the companions of his youth, and a friend most dear to obey the call. The conviction that in the world his soul was in danger enabled him to break such ties. Long afterwards, the bitterness of the parting remained fresh in his soul, and he declared that, though he had left his dear ones in the body to serve his Lord, his heart was ever with them. He entered the Cistercian order, and even there his yearning for sympathy showed itself in a special attraction to one among the brethren named Simon. This holy monk had left the world in his youth and appeared as one deaf and dumb, so absorbed was he in God. One day, Alred, forgetting for the moment the rule of perpetual silence, spoke to him. At once he prostrated himself at his feet in a token of his fault, but Simon's look of pain and displeasure haunted him for many a year, and taught him to let no human feeling disturb for one moment his union with God. A certain novice once came to Alred, saying that he must return to the world. But Alred begged his soul of God and answered, Brother, ruin not thyself. However, he would not listen, and he wandered among the hills, thinking all the while he was going far away from the abbey. At sunset, he found himself before a convent, strangely like Revo, and so it was. The first monk he met was Alred, who fell on his neck, saying, Son, why hast thou done so with me? Lo, I have wept for thee with many tears, and I trust in God that as I have asked him, thou shalt not perish. At the command of his superiors, Alred composed his great works, The Spiritual Friendship and the Mirror of Charity. In the later, he says that true love of God is only to be obtained by joining ourselves in all things to the passion of Christ. He died in 1167, founder of the Abbey of Rivaux, the most austere monastery in England, and superior of some 300 monks. When a man has given himself to God, God gives back friendship with all his other gifts a hundredfold. Friends are then loved no longer for themselves only, but for God, and that with they love lively and tender. For God can easily purify feeling. It is not feeling, but self-love which corrupts friendship.